How you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. This is Tech Jacket number one, volume one. There's, there's, there was a second Tech Jacket series. This is by Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman, as you may or may not know, is the creator of The Walking Dead and Invincible. Well, at this point he wasn't a superstar yet. At this point he did Battle Pope, which I bought the back issues because I, I'm a I, I, I'm an unabashed uh, Robert Kirkman fanboy. This guy writes good comics. And uh, and what I like about him is all of his comics have a different feel. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good writer. Um, surprisingly, in Walking Dead is probably my least favorite out of all of his comics. And I, I know that sounds pretentious. Like, uh, you know, I, I like this is my least. You got to see his other stuff. But that was also my first comic that I ever got by him. So... Uh, I guess I'd like superhero stuff better than, than the dread of the of zombies, apocalypse, stuff like that. But anyway, I'm rambling already. It's only been a minute. Yay, a new record. So I'm an unabashed Robert Kirkman fanboy. So I got the second series of Check Jacket, and it was a lot of fun. And then I saw that there was a, a, a first volume. So part of me was like, ah, I, I think there's some history before this, but I, I was like, I don't know. And then I looked it up. I saw this, so I bought back issues. This particular issue is pretty expensive pretty expensive because it also is the first appearance of Invincible. There's a preview in, in the back and we'll get to that when we get in it. So I, I don't know if this was collected or not but uh, it's fun. So here we go. Look at this. It's like pseudo manga and uh, I, I know it's not cool to say but uh, I don't want to say I'm not a fan of manga because that's not true. The mangas that I have read I've really really enjoyed. It's just that I don't know manga. You know so I'm, I'm not going to be one of these old timers that don't like the new stuff. Uh I, I I think it's kind of ignorant to, to dismiss an entire uh, genre or or whatever you want type of, of of art form because you don't know it. But uh, I'm, I I know manga is really good because uh, the few ones that I have read were amazing. So you know maybe maybe manga is the way to go in the future. But this is a manga inspired artwork. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so we have a tech jack tech jacket. Creator, writer, and letterer, Robert Kirkman. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. I didn't realize he did the lettering. Co-creator, penciler, J. Sue. E.J. Sue. I, I don't know who that is, but they, they give you a little biography in the back. Colorist, Val Staples, and the editor, Cha, uh, Chad Mannion. And let's take a look at the uh, November 2002. Okay, I didn't realize it was that old. So, here, not quite a space, uh, not quite a splash page, and look at this. I, I think the art is, is fun. Nice setup here. Yeah, space, you know, ship was zipping through everything. Sets up the aliens. This I thought was fun. You can see the, 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 the caption block has some alien lighting and then this is put over it. So it's, it's just a neat way to remind you that, yes, they're aliens and they don't speak English. But because of uh, I want to understand what's going on, they translate. It's kind of neat. And look pretty sparse and as far as I'm concerned that, that's a that's a neat panel and look look at the aliens design the humanoid without being completely human you know and again I always say this that the uh, special effects budget of a comic book if you're going to make an outlandish crazy space comic the artwork costs the same as if two people talking in front of bulletin boards so you might as well go all out so look at these aliens all right and what do they do so here here we sit the, they, they've encountered two uh, scout ships, and they're saying scout ships usually just scan us and let the warships know and come, but they, they're not leaving. Something is going on. So they activate their tech jackets. Ta-da! And they, they transform. Now, at the risk of sounding ignorant, this reminds me of like the old anime uh, Giver. So they just... And to me, that's very anime, but I admit fully well that I don't know anime and manga that well. So, you know, I know I'm going to say I love Avatar and then I get jumped on by, it's not anime. Well, I, I don't know better. P illuminate me. I fully admit. I, I never claim to be an expert on, on, uh, on manga and anime. Just like I said, I read, a f I dipped into it. I stuck my to toe in the water. So all of a sudden a bunch of uh, troopers come out. So they're like, okay, so these scout ships are filled with like super powered or, or super armored individual warriors and then space battle. I, I, I love the coloring. The coloring is bright. You can see what's going on. I'm not reading, and you can tell what's going on. Battle, you know, you don't even need words in some of these captions. It's, it's just pretty self-explanatory, you know, just good storytelling. And Kabumi, the 
good guys, because we don't really know. The good guy's ship blows up, damaged, and these aliens go back in. How's everything? Uh, we need to we need to do repairs as the uh, presumably bad guys. And again, I don't know the motivations at this point, so I don't know who's the good guy. I don't know if it's a trick. You know, I'm just gonna assume that the people we know about are the good guys because that's that's what Robert Kirkman is trying to uh, convey. Maybe it's a trick, and he's not above tricks. As a matter of fact, he's very good with the tricks. So now we come back to Earth school, typical school. Here's this guy. Uh, you could see that what's going on by the storytelling, but. You know, he's talking to his big fat buddy, and his big fat buddy's uh, happy for him. But what he did is he asked this girl out, but he didn't quite ask her out. He just asked to walk her home, and she said yes. So he's excited. He's going to go walk the girl home. Here she is waiting. And cool guy in the varsity jacket, probably on the Sporto team, says he's going to give her a ride. She's like, hi, Zach, you don't have to worry about walking me home now. Brad is going to drive me home. Brad, you know. <laughs> He's got, he's got the Sporto jacket, and his name is Brad. What else do you need to know? That's cool. I'll, I'll be seeing you around. See you later, Zach. Wah, 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 wah. You know, typical. You know, they're setting it up. And this is no different than Peter Parker in the first couple issues, except Peter Parker would have mouthed off. We, we always seem to forget that Peter Parker gave as good as he got, and Peter Parker kind of like gave more than he got. He was kind of, kind of a jerk back, back in his first couple appearances. So here he is establishing that, you know, what is this? They, they, what do they live in, like Arizona or something? Or, you know, I guess what would Arizona have these trees? Or is that buildings in the background? Not quite sure. But it's just setting up the long and winding road. And here he, he sits and daydreams. Poor Zach. Wah, wah. Back to space battle. So we, you have the limping ship. They just, <clears throat> they're looking at the scanners. There's a, there's a planet that could sustain life. We didn't know this planet existed. So we got to go there. We got to affect repairs. You know, okay, let, let's go to this planet. Remember, they basically have a, a, a prime directive kind of thing. We can't interfere in, in, in uncivilized society, which they call on the Earth, because let's face it, in, in science fiction, unless you have space flight, you're, you're uh, uncivilized. And 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 uh, I, I, I don't know if this intersects with Invincible or if it's its own world, but I've never seen Invincible in Tech Jacket, and I've never seen Tech Jacket in Invincible. So I'm going to assume... It's its own little, little standalone world. So here they are talking about stuff, and uh, there's a dilemma. The thrusters are broken, so they can't make it to Earth to do the repairs. The life support will 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 uh, die out. No, no. The thrusters, the stabilizers are broken. So if they make it, if they go to Earth, they can't land because the ship is is, is destabilizing. So if they turn off the thrusters, the, the life support will give out before they make it to Earth. So what do we do? If we, we can make it to Earth, but we can't land, or we could suffocate in space. Ta-da! So he's thinking about it. So he says, I'll use my tech jacket, and I'll, I'll study the ship from the outside. We, we can't let the mission fail. So here's the captain making a sacrifice. So I'm willing to believe that they're the good guys, okay? So now Zach makes it to his father's hardware store. His father's yelling at him, you know. You, I give you 45 minutes between school and work and you're always late and, you know, typical dad stuff. And then they go in the back room and what are they doing? They're sorting out an inventory list for an order and he gets a customer and they go in the back and what's going on? He goes out there and these guys are breaking his fingers. Set up the problem. Poor dad took out a loan to float this, this business that's not doing too well and now he can't make the payments. Problem. Typical superhero stuff. Poor kid is powerless to, to help his dad. Dad's a good guy trying to, you know, small businessman. And here comes the mafia. You know, they, they want the VIG or whatever you call it. I'm, I, I don't know that the terms too well. So uh, he's taken dad to the hospital to get his fingers repaired. They broke his fingers. Back to space battle. So he captain goes outside. He transforms his tech jacket into a big old thing. And he stabilizes the ship. And... He's going to school, and while he's going to school, he sees a spaceship. What the heck? So he runs out to... They establish that he goes into this lonely spot, and now it's a crater, and whoa. Captain's dead. He sacrificed himself, but it wasn't enough. Apparently, the ship... And you see in the, the captain's last thoughts that their number one priority is they can't let their technology get to, unprim to, to primitive races. So in the event of a crash landing on a world like this, everything's set to detonate. So the captain's 
going in and out of consciousness. And he's like, what? He sees this kid and he's like, oh, what is this? Oh, no, a primitive Terran. He does not understand. I cannot. My dying action cannot be the death of an instant of innocent. I must. It's the only way. So and then ba-boom. OK, so we'll go to the last page. The kid is is bonded with with the tech. He protected the kid. So he put his tech jacket onto the kid, thus establishing that those aliens were good guys. He couldn't kill an innocent kid. Because he, so he violated his, his empire, his republic, his whatever confederacy, whatever, whatever their politics is, he violated in order to, to save an innocent kid's life. And he, he he saw that the kid was concerned and just wanted to help. So there we go. We established that the tech jacket came from a good race. So there we go. That's that's the first issue of tech jacket. Silly name. I I, I kind of I, I passed up on it because I didn't like the name. But I've since. Uh, like Robert Kirkman. So here's Robert Kirkman, writer and creator of this series. So at this point, all he did was Battle Pope and Invincible is, is coming out. EJ Sue, artist and co-creator of the series. EJ has been working on the comic, The New Adventures of Speed Racer from Now Comics. So that's really all I know about Vic Staples. The color, he did the coloring for the Battle Pope covers. and uh, Oh, he did the colors for the new X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men for Marvel. That's cool. Okay, and there you go. So And then... Invincible preview. So this is really the first appearance of Invincible. Okay, so I, I kind of forget if this was in the comics or not, or if this is entirely in the in the uh, in this. And this is previously, mom's rushing them on the toilet, and they turn on the TV, and they. So you know we don't know that he doesn't have the powers yet. This is just establishing some of the art and that his father is Omni Man to be continued in the pages of Invincible. So I forget if this is totally new for this comic or whatever. Masters of the Universe 2. I never liked He-Man. Val Staples, Emilio Santa Lucia. I, I, I'm a, I, was always, I was too old for Masters of the Universe, and I'd hated the name He-Man. I've said that before. If you have a bad superhero name, I pretty much don't like you. And Which, surprisingly, because Tech Jacket is a terrible superhero name. This was an amazing comic. Noble Causes, and just, just great. Featuring adventure, featuring the first appearances of adventure, invincible. Wow, that's interesting. But uh, Jay Farber, I I I I loved his stuff. Plus Savage, Noble Causes. Do I have this? Yeah, I think I think I have this. But this Noble Causes was a great comic. It, it's like a, just imagine a, a real superhero family, say like the Fantastic Four, and then in an age of social media and Twitter and stuff like that. So here's a, uh, other, invincible comics. And here's an ad for Savage Dragon, Fire Breather. This was a great comic that uh, kind of just disappeared. Uh, I, I really liked it. Firepower, that's that's the name of the other Robert Kirkman. And this is an ad for the uh, issue number two. So, as you can see, the art is fun. The storytelling, it's, it's you know, it's, it's the classic tropes. Teenage, powerless kid gets powers. Now he could help his parents. Uh, it's the same origin as the Green Lantern or Nova. Space alien comes crashing down and, and gives powers to to uh, the, you know the, the 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 good noble powerless kid. You know it's Hal Jordan. It's it's Richard Ryder. Um, you know the kid's also Peter Parker. The, it, it's it's a a class, classic superhero tropes. You know they they're popular and for a reason. People people tend to like them, and I liked it. It, it was deep. It's a good comic. Um, I think this lasted about 12 issues, and then they rebooted it. Uh, and there you go. That's the first issue of Tech Jacket by, by Robert Kirk Kirkman. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. And that says a lot, considering how much I hated the superhero name, Tech Jacket. You know, it, it it's not a superhero name to me, but what do I know? So, I hope you appreciate I hope you like this. I appreciate you. That's the appreciation for, for watching my videos. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to... Trying to uh, work on my speaking, trying to trying to make it a little bit more peppy, and my computer died, so e editing for sake of like getting rid of a couple of things and uh, thumbnails and stuff like that, it, it, it's going to be weird for a couple of days until I get my computer repaired. Then I'll go in and re retroactively fix everything. So p please put up with that. I, I apologize. I I just. My computer just froze yesterday. I rebooted it, and uh, it's Sunday. There was no place to take the computer to get repaired. And I, I, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a tech jacket. I'm not a tech guy. Okay, I'm more of a hands-on build stuff kind of guy. Not, but not electronics. Okay, thanks a lot. 
Uh, I appreciate it, and I'll see you with another video. Bye-bye.